Hello everybody. So this video here is part two of setting up a sub panel. If you haven't seen part one, I'll put a link down here in the description. But basically in part one, I just went over wire sizes and how to determine your uh, breaker sizes. This video here, I'm actually just going to walk you through um, setting up the sub panel. So here we go. All right, so you might hear roosters in the background or even my dog snoring, but uh, anyway, so as you can see right here, I have my wires nice and organized uh, for each circuit here. I have them labeled. That's important. Now, this little mess right here, that's actually silicone and the knockouts. They actually sell pieces for this. I just didn't want to wait for them, and silicone will work fine. So basically, I make sure I put silicone in there so rats and bugs and stuff don't get in here. So you can see here, um, this is my main live wire. It's connected to this uh, terminal here. And what I'm gonna have to do is run a jumper from that right there over to this right here. Now, if you had you were running 240 or 220, you would just have another hot wire that would go to that. And so you can see right here, I just uh, cut a separate wire and I'm just going to strip the ends off it and I'm gonna run this jumper from one side to the other and that's going to make both um, sections of this live so I can connect more breakers otherwise what will happen is you only have one section live so basically like every other breaker would work and the other ones wouldn't work and you wouldn't be able to figure it out so one thing I want to point out too is that I don't strip the wires too much you don't want too much exposed copper unless it's ground so you can see right here running it in so I already showed you that there is my jumper and that's that so and then you can see my neutral here is going to the um, neutral uh, bus bar and the neutral bus bar we'll talk about that in a minute but uh, there's there's a rule with this that you have to know this is very important so yeah so that's connected there and now you know you'll start connecting your circuits except for one thing so you see this screw that comes with your kit? Um, you do not bond the neutral to the uh, box when you're doing a sub panel. Okay, this is very important. The reason for this is, is because you can only have one reference to ground in your setup. So basically, if you were to bond this to this, you would actually not give your... Um, your ground you wouldn't have a safe path of return and you could potentially get shocked so this is very important people overlook this a lot uh, I read that it's like the most common thing that electricians see so do not bond that on a sub panel okay so here I'm just showing you um, with these uh, breakers um, I'm gonna talk about breakers for a minute here because there's different kinds okay so the type of breaker that I'm installing is called a single pole breaker now the next type you're gonna see is a double pole breaker. Then you have these things called AFCI breakers, and you have GFCI breakers, and then you have a combination of AFCI slash GFCI. Now arc fault circuit interrupt or ground fault circuit interrupt. That's what that means. Basically they're just a lot safer they will detect even the slightest difference in voltage and they will trip they trip quickly if, if they detect any type of fault at all. So you'll see them in bathrooms, uh, the GFCIs especially. And then the arc fault are kind of a newer thing in there. I think they're required in, by code now for a lot of a lot of houses. And so the, I'm not going to go into them too deeply, but I will say that if you decide that you want to go a little safer, you should just read up on them and you can you can tell like what the difference is between them and when you should use them. But the main thing you'll see on these is you'll see a little pigtail that's a white little pigtail wire that comes off. The only difference is, is that you will run your neutral into the breaker itself. There will be a label and then you're gonna take that pigtail and that will attach to your neutral bus bar. So that's the main difference with those as far as how you connect them, but other than that, they're basically the same. Now they do have them where there is uh, no pigtail on them, but that requires a special kind of box for them and um, you, you're probably not messing with that. So 
Anyways, I just wanted to point that out because there are different types, but I am not using them for this example, so we'll just keep moving forward. Okay, so one of the things that will also confuse you is that there are different brands of breakers and boxes. And basically, to summarize it, you need to make sure that you get the same type of breaker for the box that you purchase. Because otherwise, you're going to end up getting really frustrated that you got the wrong breakers because they won't fit into the box. So when you see here, these are called square Ds, and that's the type of box it is. So they fit the way they're supposed to. Okay, so something to point out here. Every time I put together a breaker in a circuit, I mark it here and label it on the front of the case so I know where everything's going. So you can see here, I've wired a couple and the way it works is you run your hot wire into the breaker itself. If you had a double pole, you would have two wires and then you will wire your neutral to the neutral bus bar. You can see I have them all connected up there. Now you will have a separate ground bus bar when you're doing a sub panel. And you can see here, all the wires are going into that ground bus bar, including the wire coming from your main service panel. All right, so something to point out that might save you some time and frustration and a little bit of confusion is that when you buy these boxes, sometimes they will not include the ground bus bar and that's because they're usually being sold as a main panel um, unless it's specifically sold as a sub panel you won't have that ground bus bar included and you can read on the box if it includes it or not but if it does not include it you have to purchase one separately um, for a sub panel there's no way around it so you can see right here they sell them but it can get confusing because they won't come with one. You'll have all your stuff ready to go and then you're like, damn it, now I have another part that I have to buy and that can be really frustrating. And on top of it, you also gotta make sure that that bus bar matches the type of box that you're buying just the same as those breakers. So it's all sold by brand. So that should help you out so you don't get frustrated. All right, so this right here, I'm just showing you guys the, what the terminal looks like on these breakers here. You can see, you know, there's just a screw and then your wire will go straight in. So you can see here, you can actually attach two circuits to this breaker. So if you had like two small circuits that you wanted to combine into here, you could put both of them into there. Just make sure that the amperage rating on, on those circuits meets the requirement for this breaker. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about is grounding. If you wanna waste hours of your time and get confused and get frustrated, go online and start reading about grounding. It is a rabbit hole, folks. And the thing about grounding is, is that there are still some parts of it that they still don't even understand, to be honest. So I'm gonna simplify it for you, okay? If you have a sub panel, you have to have a ground bus bar. All of your grounds are gonna be connected at that bus bar, including the wire coming in from your main service panel. Also, if it's a separate building um, that you have the sub panel in, it needs to have its own ground rod. So that would mean you would have an additional wire running in there. It's called a copper bear number six usually. And that wire will go directly outside to a grounding rod or two grounding rods. So you can So if you want to play it safe, you just get yourself two ground rods, have them separated at a minimum of six feet apart. You drive them eight feet in the ground and you have a jumper going from one to the other. And then you have your main uh, bare copper wire number six going directly into your panel. And that's how you do it. Um, now, one thing I will mention too, again, is that you do not bond your neutral and your ground in a service panel, or in a sub panel, I'm sorry. So sub panels do not bond the neutral and the ground together. That is simply because if there is a fault, it needs to have the quickest path and not have more than one that can go directly to the ground and basically go to the ground rod. Otherwise, you're creating multiple points of reference and that can be dangerous. 
So grounding can be confusing and there's a lot more to it. I'm just summarizing here. I will say do your due diligence, read up on it, and you know you can definitely go down rabbit holes, but you should know what you're doing when it comes to grounding. But the main rules on a sub panel are you do not bond the neutral and the ground together and you do not put the bonding screw in the neutral bus bar to bond it to the case because as you can see here this ground bus bar is attached to the case and you will create a neutral bond. All right, so I know this is a long video and I hope it did help some people out there. Um, that's why I make these videos to help people. So hopefully it will help. Like I said, do your due diligence, do your research. There's so much out there, especially when it comes to doing electrical. It's not something you just want to, you know, jump into uh, right away. You know, you definitely want to do some reading and things like that. But, you know, sometimes you're in a bind and sometimes you can't hire an electrician. You can't afford one. You're out in the middle of nowhere, whatever the case. But, you know, you want to do it as safe as possible. So hopefully this helps and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching.